Hello friends, welcome back to part 22 of my Tesla earnings forecast video review series. I am joined as always by my co-host, Loki, who does not know it yet, but today is an episode of Breakfast with Loki. Let me angle this camera up a little, drop the height down so you can see. I'm, I'm going to be optimistic and say that Loki is going to come over and eat his breakfast. Breakfast. Okay, there you go, buddy. There you go, buddy. Let's see. Oh, check it out. All right, so we'll see if uh, if Loki wants to eat that sampler kibble and then come over and eat the rest out of his dog food bowl while he's deciding I will continue the tour of my detailed model tab in my Tesla earnings forecast Excel spreadsheet that we've been reviewing for the past several videos. We made it down to the total gross margin line where I'm forecasting 20% on the button. Now some people will think that I have backed into this number if I don't take the decimal out. That is a jagged number there. Sometimes they just happened around to an even uh, quintile. All right, uh, so what's the next section here? Well, this is one of the sections I use to make one of the charts that we reviewed earlier in this series, the one that shows uh, automotive uh, sales, net of lease deliveries, and net of regulatory credits. So I've got all that information here. I don't know if it's any better to look at it here <laughs> than it is to look at it the way we've already looked at it on a, on a chart. It probably uh, is more impactful than just seeing the numbers on a page, but I am forecasting a big increase in deliveries. We've seen that a few times already. We'll see if it happens or not uh, on July 2nd at around noon when Tesla reports production and deliveries. Next section is automotive cost of sales. Well, that's going to go up if the revenue goes up, right, by about 80% uh, of the amount that the revenue goes up by because that's the cost of sales percentage. Uh, so we've got before and after excluding leased sales uh, from the revenue and the cost of sales uh, because for these charts I wanted to show excluding leasing. Okay, what's the next section given us? We've seen uh, this information before in the cost of sales section. We've got regulatory credit sales broken out separately. That information has been shown previously uh, as well. Now these are total regulatory credit sales including the uh, foreign currency translation impact, which is why these numbers are different than the ones that we saw before. Those were excluding currency translation impact, so this number bounces around more than the other one does for that reason, because it's also being influenced by whatever the exchange rates were doing in that quarter. And we got automotive sales excluding leasing and credits in here, uh, so that number is going to increase as time goes by. Uh, it seems logical to believe you sell more vehicles, you're going to make more money. Uh, at the revenue line. So your cost of sales will go up in sympathy with that because those are the variable costs of selling additional uh, vehicles that are driving the revenue growth. Then we've got cost of sales per vehicle excluding leasing. So I've got that number hanging out right under 40,000 all year in total for the average, the weighted average for all vehicles Tesla sells. Gross profit dollars per cash sale uh, coming down some, uh, but trending up later in the year. Uh, hopefully the uh, advertising will kick in at some point and get a lot more people interested in ordering a Tesla. That'll make the backlog longer. Tesla will throttle the backlog down by raising prices some. Um, Always a huge deal when Tesla adjusts their pricing at all. As Elon pointed out recently, every automaker is adjusting their pricing all the time because it's smart to do that. It's smart to adjust your pricing to the market rate as market conditions change. It's just not as visible when other automakers do it because uh, in most cases they're selling to dealerships and they're 
uh, financing uh, those dealers' uh, purchases uh, pretty frequently. And they're offering manufacturer incentives, which are not exactly the price. And those promotional offers can change over time. So there's a lot of noise uh, in what everybody else is doing. And it's very clean to see what Tesla is doing with pricing. So it makes it uh, easier to report on Tesla changing prices. Uh, also, Tesla just gets more clicks than other automakers do. Does anybody care if Mitsubishi adjusts their prices? No, nobody even bothers clicking on that article. Uh, who cares what they uh, are charging for cars these days? And uh, there's your non-GAAP EPS, excluding regulatory credits. So if you throw regulatory credits out of the non-GAAP EPS, sometimes people want to know what that number is. It wasn't that big a number in Q1 because regulatory credits were a big uh, driver of Tesla's revenue growth in Q1. Not year over year, though. Q1 of 2022 was also a big uh, quarter for regulatory credit sales. I'll show you that. It was $678 million in the prior year, only $521 million in the current year, uh, both of these numbers including currency translation impact. Uh, so yeah, this was a smaller number in Q1, but it'll be a much bigger number in Q2, possibly double what it was in Q2 of last year because of those Shanghai lockdowns last year. So you'll see lots of big increases Q2 2023 when Tesla reports in mid to late July. Uh, and Tesla Q will write that off immediately as being, well, it's not a fair comp uh, the prior year. Uh, they weren't open the whole quarter and they'll be right. Uh, that's true. <laughs> so we'll, we'll see how they play their cards, but uh, that, that's what I expect. Uh, the next section is also for charts. You remember the charts that I went through showing the operating expenses and the SG&A that's coming from this section. I've just broken those out into, actually, I, I've shaded them the same colors here that they were on the chart. So that makes it easier for me to remember what I was doing with this section. Then in the next section, we've got non-GAAP, 12 trailing month basis, uh, quarter end actual share price. Okay, so this is for that PE compression chart uh, that I showed you previously. Those numbers have to come from somewhere, and this is the somewhere they're coming from. We don't have a quarter end actual share price yet for Q2 or future quarters, which is why you're seeing errors here and on the other lines that depend on these. Uh, I don't know the future, so I have, I, this is one of the things that I'm not forecasting uh, is a quarter end actual share price. I wouldn't want to leave a forecast in there accidentally, so a good way to do that is to leave this pound in A error uh, sitting there in my spreadsheet to remind me, hey, you got to update the actuals at the end of every quarter when you're updating your forecast. There's a few different lines in here that I have to do that with. That's one of them. So yeah, that's how you calculate your quarterly high and your quarterly low and your quarter ending uh, share prices and EP uh, and uh, PE ratios for that chart. That's where those are coming from. Then I've got an employee count metric section. So we only get updates on this number once per year. At the end of each calendar year, Tesla tells us what their employee count is. So I'm showing a, a number in every column, but I'm only showing metrics one quarter per year uh, because the number increases over time, right? So I'll, I'll run this back to the start and say, hey, Tesla had 48,000 employees at the end of 2018. So I have metrics here for Q4 2018, but then in 2019, uh, Actually, that number didn't move very much at all. That's a really bad example to give. Uh, I guess there were some layoffs in here. I think probably some Solar City positions got rid of some sales centers that were in malls closed permanently that year. Uh, then big increase in 2020, probably the Shanghai Gigafactory had something to do with this as it ramped up and added more shifts uh, and Fremont expanded some more. Then in 2021, you've got more revenue, more uh, employee count growth, uh, etc. So you can tell in these interim quarters, it wasn't remaining at the same count. It was increasing gradually, but I'm not going to 
estimate what I think those were. I'm not even gonna straight line what the uh, average growth would need to be to get you from one to the other. I'm just gonna leave it at whatever the most recently reported one was and then not show metrics below it. But you can see revenue per employee, gross margin per employee. Uh, I've got all those figured out here and some of those I have used to put onto charts uh, like this one. Uh, showing Tesla versus GM versus Ford. Why is Ford not showing up on this? There they are. Uh, so Tesla's in the white here. So as Tesla's employee count has been growing from 2019 to 2020 to 2021 to 2022, the gap profit per employee has also been increasing. That's great. This is the, the direction you would love to see uh, this moving as you're hiring more and more people. How many employees do Ford and GM have? More than Tesla has. Uh, how much gap profit per employee are they making? Less. They're making less profit per employee. Uh, with the exception of Ford in 2021, because this was a Rivian gain, uh, you can see in 2022, they had their worst performance because some of this reversed. I think nine billion of Rivian gain from 2021 reversed in 2022. Otherwise, they would have had a better uh, number here. But uh, yeah, that's a good chart. Here's another one. This one is showing, I've tweeted these out before. Uh, if you want to try and find the tweets, you can search for my handle plus hashtag F, hashtag GM, hashtag TSLA, and you'll find my comparisons against Ford and GM because I usually remember to cash tag them that way uh, for people who are invested in those companies to learn something <laughs> about what they're invested in. Uh, so here's gap profit or loss per employee by year. Tesla's is improving every year. It gets better than it did the year before. Uh, Ford and GM, you know, uh, are, are not showing steady progress up and to the right the way Tesla is. So that's what those are good for. Uh, next section is the per diluted share section. So we've got this EPS chart that we looked at previously. That's where these numbers are coming from. They're coming from actually the section below this one. So here I've done everything per share. So the entire income statement divided by the fully diluted share count is what you're seeing here. I, I probably should be showing you what the 2023 numbers are. <laughs> Let me scroll up uh, so you can see uh, what I have forecast here. I do have a forecast uh, for how many employee uh, employees I think Tesla will have at the end of 2023 uh, so that I can forecast these metrics. Probably should have mentioned that uh, before. But yeah, here's the uh, everything per share. So you can see revenue per share increasing over time with that little dip in Q1 from a low production output quarter uh, with still pretty good deliveries, but at lower pricing. Uh, then total cost of sales uh, increasing uh, congruently with the revenue increase. Then we've got income or loss from operations improving over time. These are gonna be records in Q3 and Q4 is what I'm forecasting, giving us gap net income uh, per share of these amounts down here. So that's $5-ish. So right on, right on five bucks for 2023 full year gap EPS is what I'm forecasting. The shares outstanding per diluted share equal one every quarter. That is what you want to see when you're doing everything per diluted share. You want diluted shares per diluted share to be exactly one every quarter. And then below that, I've subtotaled these in the same groupings that I'm using for that stacked revenue chart and that stacked cost chart that show you where EPS comes from visually uh, with the magnitude listed on there. Then below that, I've got a stock compensation section showing you how much uh, stock comp there is and then adjusting for the non-GAAP earnings to be the GAAP earnings plus the stock compensation, which is a non-cash expense, which is why you would make that adjustment. Then in the next section, I did some math on notes that Zach gave us 
which were little breadcrumbs I could use to try and figure out what the margins were for Austin and Berlin uh, at the time. So I did some math here, and I've carried that math forward in case it's helpful to me in the future. That's not in the uh, forecast thread. The 69 tweet thread doesn't have every uh, <laughs> every bit of my detailed model tab shown because uh, I decided to limit myself to only 69 tweets in that thread. Uh, and you also won't see my foreign currency translation adjustment section, mostly because I'm terrible at forecasting foreign currency translation adjustment, and I am giving up until somebody can tell me how to do a, a good job forecasting with uh, any degree of accuracy what the foreign currency translation impact is going to be. I tried a couple of different ways that I thought might work, and they didn't work at all. Uh, so I, I'm probably lucky that, that I that they didn't happen to work for no good reason, and I thought that I had a decent approach for it. Um, so what I've decided to do is to stop forecasting it and to just load in whatever Tesla reports. Uh, so you can see those multipliers shown here for Q3, Q4, Q1. Uh, I'm using the same multiplier for yuan as I'm using for euros, uh, and then doing the math to figure out what the dollar impact would be. They're telling us what the dollar impact is on revenue and what the dollar impact is on uh, gross margin. So that's how I'm getting to uh, the, the impacts for total revenue, which is here. So these are the total revenue impacts as Tesla uh, rounded them off and reported them. Uh, minus 0.5, minus 1.5, minus 0.8. And then in the cost of sales section, you need to solve for whatever gets you to the total gross margin impacts of 0 0.1, 0 0.3, 0 0.143. And you can see I'm not forecasting anything for the rest of the year to go. There will be impacts here. We don't know what they are yet. Uh, so long as they aren't so small that they're immaterial and Tesla doesn't tell us what the amounts were, I'll be populating these with the uh, currency translation impacts. And is that the bottom of the page? No, I have more sections down here. So I've got Tesla revenue by site and product. Uh, so you can see how many dollars worth of revenue are coming from every product Tesla makes from every place that Tesla makes products. Uh, and then uh, Tesla Energy also makes products, right? And then everything gets lumped together for services and other. Got that here. What's this next section? It's the cost of sales by site and by product. You may not care what those are. We've looked at cost of sales a few different ways already, so I'm not going to uh, bother you with that section. And that is the end of my detailed model forecast tab until I decide to add more rows to it, which makes this a great place to end a video. The next five videos will go to the top of the page and work our way down to the income statement where we started around row 1160 or whatever it is. Uh, so those, those five uh, following videos are going to cover over a thousand rows uh, that are the first five stages of building up to all these numbers we've been seeing on the charts and in the tables above over the, the past several videos. So I'll check back in with Loki, who you can't even see because you can see one ear. <laughs> I should have moved this back when Loki decided not to eat his kibble. Uh, but there he is. Uh, maybe in a future video he will eat. Uh, so I'll leave this uh, camera framed up. And with that, I will outro and say, if you've enjoyed today's video, click the like button. If you're not subscribed to my channel already, why not go ahead and subscribe to my channel over here? Click the notification bell to be alerted whenever I post fresh content. Thank you to everyone who supports me on Patreon or YouTube or on Twitter for 69 cents per week, especially my executive producers, Kathy Kitchler and Rebellionaire.com, who joined on my YouTube channel at the highest support tier, earning them a thank you at the end of every video. And... I'll see you in the next one.